I'd bet that some of you have never heard of Yoruba, which is stunning because it's an incredibly important language, maybe just not in your part of the world. It's spoken by somewhere between 30 and 45 million people, and that number is going to climb rapidly in the coming decades because of the massive population growth in West Africa. Yoruba is one of the three main African languages of Nigeria, along with Hausa and Igbo. The official language of Nigeria is English, and Nigerian Pidgin, an English-based Creole, is widely spoken. But Yoruba, Hausa, and Igbo are widely used amongst their respective ethnic groups, as are hundreds of less widely spoken languages. And because of the large number of Yoruba-speaking emigrants living around the world, it's the most widely spoken African language outside of Africa. Obviously, I mean languages native to Africa. English doesn't count. Here's a sample of what it sounds like. <laughs> Yoruba is mainly spoken in southwestern Nigeria, including the capital city Lagos, though many languages are now spoken there, and dialects closely related to Yoruba are spoken in southeastern Benin and parts of Togo. Along with Yoruba proper, these dialects are part of the Yoruboid language group, which form part of the Niger-Congo language family. Yoruboid includes Igala, Edekiri, which splits into Itsekiri, the Ede dialects spoken mainly in Benin and Togo, and Yoruba dialects. Ede dialects are sometimes considered Yoruba dialects, as they are very closely related and their speakers identify as ethnic Yoruba people. Yoruba proper has many dialects, but their standard Yoruba, which serves as the formal and written form of the language, and a bridge between those dialects. Yoruba dialects and related Yoruboid languages are spoken throughout Yoruba land, but all the Yoruba people see Ile Ife as the origin of their civilization during the Ife kingdom, which was dominant between the year 1000 and 1420. In the Yoruba tradition, Ile Ife is thought to have been founded by Odudua, a Yoruba king thought to be divine. But Yoruba civilization didn't consist of just a single Yoruba political entity. There were numerous Yoruba city-states that spoke Yoruba dialects or related Yoruboid dialects, including Oyo. The Oyo Empire surpassed Ileife and became the main Yoruba power from 1600 to around 1800 AD, until internal conflict led to its downfall and a century of warfare. After its downfall, the British expanded their influence in the area and established the Colony and Protectorate of Nigeria in 1914, incorporating the Yoruba-speaking areas in the southwest. Standard Yoruba was put together in the 1850s by Samuel A. Crowther, a Yoruba Nigerian and the first Anglican bishop in West Africa. He published a grammar of Standard Yoruba and translated the Bible into it as well. Standard Yoruba was based on a number of dialects, but mainly Oyo and Ibadan dialects. Its orthography has gone through several changes since then. It's written in a Latin-based alphabet, but it makes use of a number of accent markings and diacritics. And that brings us to an important feature of Yoruba. But first, let's talk about a software tool with numerous benefits for all of you world travelers and language enthusiasts. I'm talking about the sponsor of this video, Atlas VPN. Right now they have an amazing sale price of just $1.99 a month, which you should definitely take advantage of. I use Atlas VPN to view content online that's exclusive to certain countries. When I want to watch shows or movies in a different language, I use Atlas VPN to make streaming services think I'm in a country where that language is spoken, giving me access to more local content. You can also use Atlas VPN to keep your Google searches and downloads private, like if you're traveling in a country where an invasive government might be monitoring your online activity, or if you're worried about big tech using your data. It also stops illicit ads, malware, and trackers, and notifies you of attempts to use your data. Also, a VPN can help you get the best online prices, like the time I saved hundreds of dollars on a stock music subscription by using the American version of the site, rather than my local version. I prefer not to be ripped off, thank you very much. So Atlas VPN is a very useful tool all over the world, and it's the best deal all over the world, at only $1.99 per month for a three-year subscription, on unlimited devices, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. But time is running out, so be sure to lock in that low price by clicking the link in the description down below. And now back to features. Yoruba has three tones, which are shown in writing. High, with an acute accent. Low, with a grave accent. And middle.
these days with no marking, though it used to be shown with a macron. For example, look at the word for cat. Ologbo. It has a middle tone, then a high tone, then a low tone. Ologbo. The tones are phonemic, and changes in tone result in changes in meaning. Ogun. Means 20. Ogun. Means war. Ogun. Is the Yoruba god of iron, war, and technology. And Ogun. Is the name of a river. Another marking you'll notice in text is a dot below E, O, and S. It changes the vowels from close to open, A to E, and O to A. It changes the S from S to SH. There are three types of syllable in Yoruba, those that consist of a vowel, a consonant plus a vowel, or a syllabic nasal. In the example, Ogun. there are two syllables, the first a vowel, and the second a consonant plus a nasal vowel. Even though in writing the N looks like a separate consonant, the combination of vowel plus N actually shows a nasal vowel. An example of a syllabic nasal is one form of the pronoun meaning I, N, which is used in negative sentences. Some other interesting consonants in Yoruba are velar labial stops, kb and kb. They have a double articulation at the lips and at the back of the roof of the mouth, kb, kb. The letter P in writing represents the sound kb. There's no simple p sound in the language. Other notable features. The basic word order of Yoruba is SVO. This sentence means they bought a house. Word for word, they buy house. Note that in speech, this is pronounced like because when a word ending in a vowel is followed by a word that begins with a vowel, they blend together. This SVO order can change with a focus construction. Ni marks the focus. They bought a house, or it is they who bought a house. This is still SVO, but the subject is the focus. Is the emphatic pronoun meaning they, and it's followed by the focus marker. They bought a house, or a house is what they bought. This is now OSV, and the object is the focus. If you notice that ra has a different tone in this sentence, that's because in its basic form it has a low tone, but before a direct object it has a mid-tone, like in the SVO version of this sentence. A couple of other things to note about Yoruba's grammar. It has no grammatical gender, no noun cases, no plural forms, and no definite or indefinite articles. This is good news for people who have no patience for learning the ins and outs of grammar. Verbs are also not conjugated for person, number, or gender, or tense for that matter. Tense and aspect markers are placed before the verb to indicate time. When it's just the verb stem on its own, for a dynamic verb that indicates simple past, for a state of verb it indicates present or past. Mousson. I slept. Mousson. I'm sleeping, or I was sleeping. This is the progressive or imperfective aspect. Note that before the progressive marker n, the pronoun mo becomes mo, with a low tone. N is also another example of a syllabic nasal. Motisson. I've slept. This is the perfective aspect. Motinson. I've been sleeping, the perfect progressive form. Momasson. I will sleep, in the future tense. Now that we've seen some standout features of Yoruba, let's look at some basic phrases. Enle. This is one way to give a general greeting like hello. But you can also use a greeting for the specific time of day. Ekara. Good morning. Note that if there's more than one tone in one syllable, then the vowel is normally written once for each tone. These three A's are all part of a single syllable, but with a high-low-high progression. Ekasa. Good afternoon. Ekale. Good evening or good night. Note that E is honorific and is not used when speaking to friends, colleagues, and people younger than you. It's the second person plural personal pronoun, which is also used for the honorific second person singular. The main word in each greeting is a contraction of ku, a verb used to mark greetings, plus a noun. Ara is the word for morning. Asa is the word for midday. Ale is the word for evening or night. Kini urukare. What's your name? Informal. Word for word it's what, focus marker, name, your. But it might also be said with contractions. Notice that the nasal sound becomes a l sound when ni contracts to the following word, and the r sound is lost. The formal way to say it is is the second person plural possessive adjective, but also the formal or polite second person singular. My name is Paul. Word for word it's name, my, focus marker, Paul. Notice that the noun and the possessive adjective me function as one unit, as a noun phrase, and the focus marker comes after it. Another way to say the sentence is Paul Nyorukami. Word for word, it's Paul, focus marker, name, my. 
In this sentence, the focus is on the name. So you could think of it like, Paul is my name, or my name is Paul, with stress on the name. And when spoken naturally, it might be, Paul Lorukami. Because as we saw before, ni becomes li. You know me, don't like it by day, right? Nice to meet you. Word for word, it's insides, my, pleasant, infinitive marker, meet, you. In this sentence, we see the phrase, which means I'm happy, but literally it's more like my insides are pleasant. Then we see, meaning to meet, in which lati is the infinitive marker. Where's the bus station? Word for word, it's where, focus marker, station, bus, located. Nibo is the interrogative pronoun meaning where. Here it's the focus and is marked with ni. Interrogative pronouns are always the focus. Ibudo means station and akakiro means bus. Wa is a verb meaning to be located at. Oonibata todara. You have nice shoes. Word for word, you have shoes that are nice. Simple adjectives in Yoruba come directly after the noun, but dada is actually a descriptive verb meaning to be nice. So it can't come directly after the noun. It needs this connecting word to. To is actually a contraction of tio, meaning that is or that are. Ora mi fumi ni bata wan yi. My friend gave me these shoes. Word for word, friend, my, give, me, direct object marker, shoe, these. Ora means friend and is followed by the possessive adjective me. Fung me means give me, but note that the verb is understood in the past tense in its base form like this. Me is the indirect object. When there's an indirect object, then the direct object takes a special marker, ni. Bata means shoe, and wanyi is a plural demonstrative, meaning these. Shogbaidegasi. Do you speak English? Word for word, yes, no, question marker, you, here, language, English. In this sentence, we see how to form a yes or no question in Yoruba. You add the question marker, she. Without the question marker, this would be a statement. You speak English. Is actually the verb meaning here, but it's used when saying you're proficient in a language. The word for language is and is the word for English. It comes from the Portuguese word inglês. Yes, I speak English. Word for word, yes, I hear language English. Is the word for yes. Rara in no, I don't speak English. Word for word, it's no, I, not, hear, language, English. Rara is the word for no. Note that the first person singular pronoun mo becomes ing before the negation marker ko, like ing ko. To express what you like, you can use the phrase mo faran. I like. Mo faran ologbo. I like cats. Word for word, I like cat. To say I don't like it's ing ko faran. Again, notice the negation marker and the different form of the pronoun. I don't like dogs. Word for word, it's I don't like dog. To express that you like to do something, it's For example, I like to learn languages. Word for word, it's I like infinitive marker learn language. Lati is an infinitive marker, but on its own is also a preposition meaning from or since. Ka means learn. And again, we see the word for language. Idi. However, when expressing that you want to do something, Lati is not used. Mofe. I want to. Mofe kai de Yoruba. I want to learn Yoruba. After this brief little look into Yoruba, I'm sure you can agree that it looks like a fun and fascinating language, and one that's not too intimidating, at least in certain ways, such as its lack of grammatical gender, noun cases, plural forms, and articles. The main thing that might seem intimidating is the tonal system, and the way it's represented with accent markings in writing. But those accent markings can help you know the tones of words even when you just see them in writing, and you can remember the tones visually as well as by sound. If you're a speaker of Yoruba, to what extent do you use the standard language and to what extent do you use your dialect? How easy is it to communicate with speakers of different Yoruba dialects? And to other people, what's your impression of Yoruba? It's time to say thank you to all of the special LangFocus Patreon supporters, especially the ones whose names appear right here on the screen. They are the top tier Patreon supporters, so many extra special thanks go out to them as always. Be sure to check out patreon.com slash langfocus to find out how you can become a patron and support content like this. Another West African language I've covered is Wolof, which is spoken in Senegal and the Gambia. Check out my video on Wolof. I know you'll be blown away by some of the language's features.